In this video, we just part three of the Chart.js Gantt chart series. We're going to focus on converting the into a color coded intuitive form of communication where you can see if something is completed, pending or delayed. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's continue on and this is part three of the Chart.js series. So what we want to do now is we want to convert this uh, text here because basically this text is nice, but it's just not a strong visual. What makes more sense is here to see a color coordination where you can easily see based on the color if something is done, temporary or pending. And finally we have the uh, delayed or something like, so basically green, red and yellow would be a nice color coding for this. So to do this, I want to use as well font awesome as, as a way to communicate, just more intuitive, more faster. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we need to make sure we have uh, font awesome JavaScript or CSS file ready. And I'm going to get the version of 4.7, which might be old fashioned, but it works very, very easily with Chart.js. So that's why I like this. And of course you could use any version of it, but you have to dig a bit more in their CSS file. So for me, I'm just going to grab this one and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So don't worry about that. Copy this link here. So once you're here, scroll down, and then we're going to just put that in here. Save that, refresh. Of course, nothing happened. So, but we have now this file up and running. What I want to do is I just want to grab this and just put that in here. All right, so we have this and later on you will see that this will become very, very important to us. More specifically, the font family will become an important part. All right, so now we have this, let's scroll down and let's start to change this a little bit. We have here the pending and the, for the complete delayed pending. I want to change this. Uh, instead of having here text, I would want to use a number code that we can convert into a text, which makes more sense to us. So for example, we have code zero, which is for uh, delayed uh, projects. There will be code zero. We have pending, which is number one. And of course you could have multiples you want, it's up to you. And number two for me here will be completed, which will be a green color. And since this could be just a number, we don't need to put any string value here. So I'm showing all these options here. And the goal for me here is to make sure that you understand every option you can use. So that's the reason why I'm doing this, because basically we're just fixing or redoing this here, but it's in another format. Maybe that's preferred for you. So then I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to look at our status plugin because here now we have to change stuff. So. If I save this already and refresh, you can see we get now these numbers here. All right. So that's number one. And what we're going to do is two things. I want to create a circle around it. And this circle will be uh, the color that we want. However, to get this, what I need to do here is eventually uh, we have this status here. Now we have the number. I want this number to be an array reflecting an array. So I'm going to create an array here. Constant. And um, oh, before I even do that, I want to do something else first, my bad. So you can see here this font family that we have indicated here. This is important because this here indicates the type of font family that we're going to use. In this case, and that's the reason why I was showing you this file here, we need to indicate the font family of font awesome. This is not by default recognized, while sans serif is since there are a few defaults. However, this one we're putting here now, and now the canvas understands that this is a font family that we are allowed to use to draw in here in the canvas. And that will be very interesting. And now what I want to do is, well, let's, before I even make an array, let's do something here. It's going to remove all of this. And now I'll just say here string. And how do we put then, for example, here, if this is a green, a check mark? Well, let's go here to the font awesome icons and search for the check mark or any icon you want. And let's search for the check. That's one of them. So I'm going to select this check here. You can see here we have the Unicode. This Unicode is for us crucial because this is what JavaScript can read. JavaScript cannot read the CSS uh, format. So we need to have this Unicode in here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here backslash and then U for Unicode, paste the four codes in here. If I do this and save this right now, go back here, refresh, you can see now by default they are all check marks. Beautiful. So this works. 
Of course, I don't want all check marks. The check marks will depend on what our code is or what our number code is. So I'm going to say here constant. And I'm going to give this a name of icons. And in this icons, I'm going to create an array. And this array will consist of certain string values. The first one is zero, exactly matching with what we have here above. We have status zero, which is basically the delayed status. Status one is pending or in progress. And number two is the success or completed. So what I'm going to do here is the first one will be the uh, delayed. And the delayed is probably a nice uh, time. So but let's grab this, this one here. And we'll say that this one will be the last one, which is index number two. So that's first. So then we go back here, we're going to search for another one, let's say times, which have an X. That's the one I need. And then we can grab this as well, Unicode, grab this one. And we say here, back tick, U for Unicode, and paste then the four characters in here. Finally, we have here this work in progress. I couldn't find a proper icon for it. So I saw something like the loading, something like that, or spinner. I think that is quite acceptable, of course. You can find anything you want. For me, it does not matter right now. It's just for demo purposes. So I'm going to say here again, backtick, Unicode, and copy the four Unicode characters. All right, so once I have this, all I have to do now is to remove this, because remember, we had this for each loop here. We say the status, and then what we are going to do here, this is a number in itself. And now what I want to do is, I want to grab here this icon array, and then I'll say, Whatever the status number is, give me the icon array index number and the matching value. So if I save this, go here, refresh, we can see here now we have here this pending, the delayed, and finally we have here the check mark or completed item. This is nice, but now let's start to work with the color. So how do we do the colors? Well, basically almost the same logic. So what I'm going to do here, enter, I'll say here constant, and let's go and give this colors or colors with you. It depends on how you prefer. And then in here, I'm going to grab the color code that we have. This is the red color. This is the yellow color and this is the green color. So I'm going to grab here the red color first, scroll down, put it in here, then a comma. Let's get now the green color or sorry, not the yellow color. The yellow color is this, uh, the third color in line. And I'm getting it from the border color because I want a solid yellow color. And maybe orange is even easier to spot than yellow, so it's up to you which one you prefer. And then finally, I want the green color, which is the fourth value. Put that in there. And uh, comma, paste. All right, so we have this. But then what we want to do here eventually is because this still doesn't work. If I could grab this, and what we could do here is to check the color of our font by putting it in here. But I don't want that really. But if we would do it, now just do index zero for now, just simple. You see everything becomes red, all right? So this is not what I want because I want the font here to be, uh, basically this could be white and then we have a circle around it. So how do we do this? So let me undo this all. I'll just keep this black for now. But what I need to do is I need to create what we call an arc or basically a circle shape. So let's start to do that. So what I'm going to do here is enter. Then what I want to do here is because this is very important. The order of drawing is important because whatever we draw first, everything else will be on top of that. I want to make sure that the text will be in the circle, but that will mean that we need to draw the circle first and afterwards we draw the text. So this text here will be drawn after we draw the circle. So now let's start to draw the circle. We're going to say here, and this is one of the commands, it's arc. And we have to make sure that we put in ctx.arc. And then here we need six variables. So we have here the x variable, the y variable, basically where we start the circle, the center of the circle. We have the radius. We have here the angle start, and we have the angle end. And finally, counterclockwise, but that is, in our case, false. And I think 99% of the time it is considered false. So we can do this one already on false. Or we can set that already on false. However, everything else, now we need to start working on it. So how do we get the X and Y? Well, basically, the center would be here. 
that's the center and then after that the radius defines from the center how many pixels are we going up uh, or how many pixels are we going up down left right anywhere so basically that will draw the circle so the radius let's say here because we have a 12 pixel it would make sense to have at least at least six pixels radius minimum but then you would just hit 12 so I, I think having 12 pixels on here would be the best item all right so then we have to figure out where, what is our position. Well, our position is basically what we have here. We have here the right side. That is basically the x coordinates. And then what we also have is the uh, y coordinates in here. So I want to copy those and put that in here. All right. Once I do this, we have this. Now we have still the angle. And for the angle, I'm going to use a trick or a constant because I need to calculate something. So I'm going to say angle constant angle equals math dot pi divided by 180 degree what I'm really doing here is one pi equals a half circle so that would mean that is 180 degree so if I divide it by 80 degrees by the same amount of 180 I will get one degree and from there on I can multiply by 360 to get a full circle so this is just easier for me or else you have to work with the math dot pi then you have to probably work with two pi and it can be sometimes tricky. So doing this is basically easier. So we're going to say angle multiplied by zero, but of course, whatever the value is, is always zero. So we can just shorthand that like that. Then we say here, angle multiplied by 360 to create a full circle. So starting is part of the circle and then full circle like that. All right, so now we have this here. Once we did this, if I save this and refresh, nothing happens yet. The reason why nothing happens, we didn't draw anything yet, so we have to start to draw now. So what I want to do here is, first of all, we should say here for this, to create a begin path to make this shape independent of anything else. So we say here, ctx.begin path. And this forces every other shape to be independent from this, so this is a new shape and nothing will bleed over. And then we're going to say here, well, well, what we're missing then here is, of course, a proper fill style. So I'm going to copy this, put it in here. And here, what I will do is I'm going to get the colors. And the colors will be based on whatever index number it is. And remember, we have the data point status that will give us the number. That's next. What I want to do is, because this is a begin path here, and I want to make a full circle which is basically this, and then I want to close that circle. So I'm forced to use here, close path to make sure that the inner part will be filled as well completely. So once we did this, the only thing I want to do now is to say here, ctx.fill to draw the circle. If I save this, refresh, you can see here now what's happening. Our item is now being drawn, but of course the text here, because of this color is being bleeding over I guess to the other item here because I didn't restart or I didn't set here a new color this here is being overwritten by this here so what I can do here just simply I can cut out this and once I cut out that I will put that in here and we can do it black the refresh there you are that looks much much better but I don't like this I like it more in white so let's do this white save refresh and now we have this and although this one is slightly bit tough to read I want to convert it into orange so we have a bit more easier read and that is if I'm not mistaken the sixth value of the border color am I correct or is it the seventh yeah that is the sixth color so uh, let's go down here and to change that that will be this yellow will be converted into orange save refresh that is much better on the eyes alright and that's basically how we can do this and now you can see here if I would change a value let's say status 0 on this one on Lily on task number 4 refresh there we are absolutely amazing and then of course number 1 absolutely phenomenal so it all works nicely so that's basically how you can play around with that with these color codes here so next video we're going to focus on just putting some text here i guess it would make more sense to put at least a name or description of what this column would represent and the same here 
We'll cover that in the next video.